Good morning everyone. My guest today is a very creative artist. Her name is Shaima Taha. She's an interior designer by education. Uh, she graduated from Sheridan College in Canada a few years ago. I won't mention how many years ago. <laughs> Thank you. Years ago. She started different ventures very successfully. Let's see her journey and uh, see what we can learn from her, especially other artists who want to pursue a career as an employee of an organization or maybe uh, on a self-employed track. Let's see what we can learn from Shaima today. So Shaima, thank you so much thank for giving you so your time. Much. Thank you for coming. <laughs> world as it is today is very different than what it was for us. I mean, we had the four given career choices yeah. <laughs> when we were younger as engineers, doctors, lawyers, and, you know, call it, uh, I don't know if there was anything else, housewife, I suppose. <laughs> those were home economics. Those were the four choices that you had. When I came here, uh, that's the first time I, in grade nine or ten, you do civics and careers and you realize, oh, how many careers there are you can be like a like a visual merchandiser and you can be this and you can be that and then that's where I was more into like oh architecture interior design was 100% here HGTV was a factor for that and grade 8 the teacher put up my stuff in the uh, one of my paintings in uh, the hallway of the school and that was like oh my god I can do something like this and you know my work was on, on in the corridor it was on the wall and that was like you know that one teacher who tells you your work is good enough you know and then you're like uh, you just keep exploring keep pushing keep going and then there's no end to it I mean um, and that's something why I chose this during summer. I used to uh, work for my uncle who used to write med medical transcripts. So every summer, all day long, I had the earphones on and I was typing doctor's medical transcripts. Right. So I'm a doctor <laughs> without certification, if you want to call it. Um, you know, what symptoms lead to what? I have probably done about about 2500 transcripts wow. uh, in four or five years and so <laughs> despite having that I mean I this was something that I chose because mm. it was just something that made me happy did it make me money I hope it does <laughs> uh, but it makes me happy so yeah. I guess what you're saying is we should expose our kids to arts. Absolutely. Because I think even Steve Jobs took a class mm -hmm. in arts and he combined arts and science into this Absolutely. amazing company. I mean, if we if we really think about it and if we've done, you know, uh, Leonardo, Leonardo da Vinci was... Yeah. I mean, everybody's fighting. Was, <laughs> was he a scientist? Was he an artist? Was he... But he was an all-rounder, you know, exactly. and he was like the perfect package. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at that, I mean, science is physics. Uh, you know, medical, uh, all of those things. He invented so many tools. The degree is called bachelor's in design because the design itself is spatial design, which is mm -hmm. architecture. Um, there is visual arts in it, mm -hmm. which is fine arts or ceramics or those things. And those are all minors that we right. take or even the journey up to deciding that you want to be an artist. Yeah you sort of try your hands at everything. I mean, um, we did Japanese flower arrangements once, you know, summer courses just the way you would enroll your kids into different art programs just so that they see what they want to try. Hmm. Uh, so it comes out to a whole probably 15 to 20 years of training into understanding uh, different classes and then uh, you realize what you want to specialize in. Um, or what you, <laughs> when I wanted to get into interior design, I was scared of uh, it become boring because now yes. it's the technical and the, the, you know, you have to know and now the passion is not there because you have all the, the, the bylaws and all those kinds of things you have to follow mm -hmm. too. So it no longer, uh, I was scared of doing that, but um, I realized very soon uh, the the expanse of which yeah. interior design or architecture is. I mean, there's residential spaces, there's commercial spaces, mm -hmm. there's landscape design, there's so much out there. Um, and once you understand design, I mean, especially if you go back, uh, a lot of architects are doing yeah. interior design, although they're not qualified or, mm -hmm. or, or certified, I wouldn't say qualified, but certified in interior design. Yeah. Um, and that's because 
in your training you've taken the process of understanding color theory you've taken space you've taken design you've taken we do graphic designing as well um you name it i mean we we won't be the masters at it mm-hmm. but we will always get our hands in there photography yeah. um a lot of us especially architects they love doing architectural photography mm. uh spaces interior designers you'd go you either see them with a sketchbook or you'd see them with their phone these days or ipads and they're always taking pictures of little things you know which which create uh, or inspire So can you tell me about your first venture that you started 6 years ago? Um our first venture was called Creatively Crafty Children. By the name we can tell it was a setup studio for mm-hmm. children uh ages 3 plus in order to expose them with um creative skills. Um and we did every skill out there we did sewing for 3 year olds as, as well as just um painting and and paper arts. all of those things we did i remember uh in my childhood when we used to live with our grandparents um every summer it was a task to learn something new whether it's knitting or embroidery hmm. and those those skills or or that family setup is no longer um running uh here anymore so that was something i wanted to revive all our kids are watching um how to make videos but nobody's making anything because our our parents are so into the house is going to be messy or what not so we wanted yeah. to create an outlet where children can come in and do these things uh because i had two younger kids um myself so that was in terms of time in terms of uh my presence at home i started with creatively crafty uh children okay that cool. way <laughs> and then you transitioned to into artists on wheels what yes. was that about? like why did you i had a lot of people approach uh, me and ask to come into schools mm-hmm. and to come into uh you know do private parties um that was one of the factors where i started to think about it then i moved from milton to guelph uh which meant you know closing the the studio itself so i closed the studio and i went i very smoothly transitioned into artist on wheels so now i can be anywhere you want me to be um and we did paint events paint brunches we did corporate events um we did uh Uh, I went to schools, public schools and mm-hmm. private schools. We did ceramic tiles, we did uh, plaster casting, everything. Any any skill you want to expose your children to or your students to, we will bring it to you. And so that's where Artist on Wheels came in even today. It's active. Uh we do the classes we have a home now. So yeah. back to the studio <laughs> where we have the the loft, but uh we still go to places. We go to restaurants and we do it. Oh, interesting. So it's a lot of fun. <laughs> and you in addition to that, you also started the Ink Loft yes. that you launched earlier this year. So uh what did you add? Like what additional kind of services that you start so offering? So we did with the ink loft we got ourselves uh a space which is 2500 square feet um it's a beautiful industrial high ceiling space as you can see <laughs> and uh what we wanted to do with this is one give a home to artists on wheels to give uh start up the creatively crafty children aspect again and get uh, regular classes in here march camps and the other thing the other two important things that we do is we're a collaborative uh, workspace meaning uh, any other artists or designers who want to work out from here they're able to rent a space and they're able to showcase their work sell their work all of mm-hmm. that over here and the best part of it is that you can rent the loft completely um it has a capacity of 100 people and you can rent it for private events you can rent it for parties you can rent it for seminars meetings trainings if you want to do a fitness class here you can run a yoga class here mm-hmm. um you can run a bollywood class here <laughs> <Go for it. laughs> absolutely so you can rent the space by the hour we have promos happening very often 
overall this part of town isn't very crowded mm. as well so i think it's perfect for events yeah we have a lot of parking we have parking all through this way and at the end of the lot we have an empty lot yeah. and then we have the milton mall right here <laughs> so you have especially if you're doing evening um um, events you know uh, social events social gatherings and it's really we had we even had a dholki here someone oh, nice. did, did it and it was really <laughs> fun and really exciting and you have parking is not a problem here at all so i have another venture which i'll tell you about <laughs> and my hands in too many things we do the pop-up souk which yep. is uh, the pop-up market, market event yep. that happens, which had our grand opening. So she is my partner, Shaheen is my partner for that. And we do um, three pop-ups during the year and mm-hmm. they're very family oriented. Uh, they have a charity aspect to it. And they have the, the pop-up souk in itself has different local um, vendors or artisans who make handicrafts mm-hmm. or their own designers. Um, and they, they put up their own stalls within the space and okay. we invite a lot of uh, people to come in and to see their work and see the event. So we had a family day one, we mm. have a Ramadan one, we have an event planning event right. which is called Bliss, it happens in September. Yeah. So that's where all photographers, videographers, uh, florists, um, venue <laughs> if you want to call it you know decorators caterers yeah. all those will be present in that i was wondering how did you know when to transition into a brick and mortar store <sighs> i am going to say this would be um, knowing is there's a gut feeling okay um i think there sometimes you get when you're a visionary or when you when you get you get ideas stuck in your head yep. and I was I was actually hoping to start something probably by April mm-hmm. um, but I found this place and I found this place and I walked in it used to be a bike store um, and it was greasy and <laughs> disgusting <laughs> but the 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 ceilings were beautiful the height yep. was beautiful and the potential was beautiful and I just said you know what just jump <laughs> um, and I, I remember I, I had a good talk with my husband he said you know think about it and you know and I was like I know for a fact that if I don't do it yep. I will regret it my whole life hmm. so when you get an idea don't don't think you can't do it obviously you need more prep work <laughs> I started looking in December and I had this place in January, January 15th, I had the uh-huh. keys and we opened um, February 6th uh, unofficially. And so, like three weeks, um, there's a lot of work that goes into it. There's mm. business plan, there's marketing plans, mm. there are budgeting. <laughs> Most importantly, your budgeting. Zoning, the city requires, mm. you need to have a business license, you need to have different permits. Um, Anytime I have to make a structural change here, mm-hmm. I need to get building permits. Right. Those, those are costly. Things like basic paint require, you know, you need to have commercial grade. This is no longer a house of venture. So mm-hmm. uh, everything requires professionals to come in okay. and um, do those things. And so you learn a lot. That was actually my next question. Like, did you make the business plan by yourself or did you take some professional help from a CPA or something? No? <laughs> I didn't. I did it myself. I sat with my father. Uh, mm-hmm. He's an MBA. And I sat with him and I proposed this to him and I said, this is something that I think Mm -hmm. uh, we should look into. And I think it would be a nice uh, space to have. And Milton needs it. Milton has a very nice age group, I would say, Mm. within the community. And that age group requires outlets, especially the six months that we're in the winter. We're we're stuck and I personally don't want to go out. So this was this was my motivation. If I set the hours, I have to step out, um, yeah. and that way there's something happening for everyone. Even mm-hmm. there's more indoor requirement during that time, and so that was the vision. That was the idea, and then we worked as to how to make it practical. You mentioned that you had to choose a business name. Like, did you have to register a corporation yes. for this? You have to have a business number. You have mm-hmm. to have a business name. Right. Uh, you have to be incorporated, and then you need a business number with the CRA. Right. These are and the business license. So these mm-hmm. are five few 
basic things before you can even get approved or accepted for anything. Corporation, super easy, getting a name, registration, those things are not hard at all. Your business uh, permit um, includes zoning and uh, those aspects. So once you go with to the city, yeah. I had a lot of uh, ease with the city. I, I went there with all the questions that I had. You can approach them, they're really friendly. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're friendly back, <laughs> obviously. As you mentioned, they can learn textile designing, they can learn painting yeah. here. What else do you teach? In- uh, we do a lot of different things, including, like I said, exposure to materials. We do wood carving, we do plaster casting, we do plaster and cement casting, um, we do plaster carving as well. Right. Um, we do textiles in the sense we do loom. We have fabric looms where yeah. children are able to loom through and make their own bra- um, patterns, learning how to make patterns, mm-hmm. learning which patterns are going to be successful. Yep. Um, those things happen. We do block printing, we do print making, we do cross, uh, cross stitching, we do embroidery. This big one is also um, ours, mine, and I would say it started off with uh, just I want within this space I want to have people come in I'm gonna put uh, palette knives and paint brushes with it and every month we're gonna put up a big canvas mm-hmm. and have everyone do a little bit on it try their thing and we see at the end of the month or at the end of the week whenever it's done yeah. uh, what it looks like <laughs> Start with a smile, I always say. Start, this is something business teaches you, that you cannot run anything without a, a pleasant smile. Yeah. Um, so this is, and it's so hard. It is so hard and to, <laughs> to remember. It's so easy to forget and get frustrated with all the work that you have to do and keep that smile on. But it is your number one marketing. Okay, your, The way you present yourself and the way you are with just you're going out to uh, seek help but does so, that come naturally to you no. or <laughs> <laughs> absolutely not i am a very, according to my kids i'm a very <laughs> uh, no a lot of people have a like my husband very easy going very fun smiling and uh, you know always that and i've had to take those lessons from him that you know everything is not you know, to be taken so seriously, like loosen up a little. And uh, once I started this and I realized, you know, there's a lot more, more than, more than people needing me, I need people. Hmm. And so I cannot be uninviting on my part. So being inviting is where the smile comes in, no matter where you are, who, you know, or where you're from, that should be something that we practice. Um, and I feel if we just start smiling at our kids and smiling generally, even if something is bothering us, we smile it off. It's like laughter therapy, but not so <laughs> so loud. But uh, you you learn you learn you you figure it out. A lot of times when I'm working, I'm with a very strict face, but uh, you just have to keep giving yourself constant reminders that, you know, it's it's going to be okay. Most of the times you're thinking so much about yep. the business that you're thinking, this is not going to happen. What am I going to do? It was, it's, it's a funny story I'm going to tell you. Um, the two weeks that I was doing Renault's here, I was here in the morning and I was here till, till late night and I had my mom taking care of the kids uh, at my place and I was here spray painting and getting all this stuff in my face and in my hand. Um, I was tired. At the end of two weeks I drove down to the dollar store down here and I met a friend. He said, how are you? And you know, I heard you started doing this and I said, yeah. And then he just said, how are you doing it with your family and your kids? And I started crying. In the middle of dollar store, I was crying, and it wasn't, it wasn't something that it, it had because the first person he was the first person who asked, "How are you doing?" Okay. You know, and oh gosh, it was hilarious when I think about it. And standing in the middle of the dollar store, and I was just crying, and he's like, 
oh, I'm sorry I didn't mean it. You know? <laughs> like those, that's the feeling. It's so overwhelming. It's so exhausting. You have to be ready for it. There are so many sacrifices that go into it. Every day my kids are, you know, every day when I'm leaving or when I come back and they're there. Um, <laughs> I think about them the whole day. And they think about me obviously the whole day and it's, it's a lot of work but when you have people who believe in you and yeah. you have people uh, who are encouraging you obviously they're when when they're at home they they love the fact when i bring them here and they're yeah. like you know it's your shop and they're so proud of it yeah. so that gives you a lot of motivation for sure i'm definitely doing it for them and to make them understand that you know there's nothing that you can't do if you yeah. really work hard My daughter, I think she she really loves arts, mm -hmm. but we always wonder whether she'll be into mathematics or sciences or not. So what do you think, like, are artists born or do they learn to become artists as they grow up? I have a lot of uh, parents asking me that and they're sometimes quite frustrated when kids only want to do art. But I tell them there's only an age till they're fearless, mm -hmm. right? So there's only an age till they're going to try this stuff. After that, they're going to see the world from a very different perspective. I tell the parents that your child is going to be what they're going to be, but with art, they're going to be someone who's innovative in their career. Mm -hmm. So whether it's an architect, whether it's a doctor, you know, someone created those machines that yeah. we use today, yeah. right? And it was someone who understood medicine. It was someone who thought outside the box and so it was someone who understood materials you know what what we have out in this world especially nowadays if we're stuck to the screen no matter what we're doing even when we're drawing with you know ipads and stuff we no longer feel the materials we don't feel charcoal in our hand we don't feel paint in our hand anymore and so the 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 properties of each material we don't understand so how are we going to create or make inventions right so if if someone was able to create even something as simple as a you know an electrical hand moving you know motorized hand understanding wires understanding joints understanding st structure sure. you know how heavy does the the top of the hand has to have to be or how heavy does it have to be at the bottom to hold the weight all of these things come yeah. from understanding your different materials the density mm -hmm. the weight and all of these things so your children are still going to become the doctors they're still going to become the lawyers but they'll be the creative ones the mm -hmm. innovative ones the ones who invent things the one who introduce new things start new trends yeah. they are going to be the ones who are going to do it this is a discussion that i was having with a lot of parents when they see their kids uh, children's works they see oh wow you know and then when they're not doing it in under in in a class situation or a class mm -hmm. setting they say okay this wasn't the same and the biggest thing is one direction you know uh, when we teach or I teach I do step by step and I give them sort of boundaries but freedom and choices as well so what they're able to explore it in that way but still have boundaries mm -hmm. and understand the skills that go into it and eventually they look at things differently mm -hmm. and the difference between children and adults is children are not afraid of failure so they will always try something if i tell you to start painting you're going to be like i'm not good at it yeah. you know so and this is across the board especially sadly we, when we do our couples paint nights and things the men are like why are we here <laughs> <laughs> you know or she dragged me here or you know this is what you need to do to keep them happy <laughs> but uh it's it's the fear of of thinking that you're going to fail there's no wrong um, within the boundaries obviously there's yeah. no wrong uh, in your expression I mean throughout nice. the years there's been so many different styles that have mm -hmm. come so who's to say what's right and what's wrong right? so there are different levels of being self-employed one is freelancing uh, the second is having a shop like this. Mm -hmm. This should be like your very last attempt. <laughs> Don't start with this. It's a, it's there's a lot to learn, and I got here because of the children, craft, creatively crafted children, or from um, artists on wheels, and 
basically what you want to do is see what um, you can for example um, if you're a textile or an interior designer right. right you can go into visual merchandising so go into stores mm-hmm. uh, and say I want to dress up your window okay. right so do your window display that's something mm-hmm. that I want to do um, and a lot of them are just giving stuff like that if you go to Home Depot if you're an interior designer for example say I want to design one of your bathroom displays what products do you have let's let's do that um, if you're a, a fashion designer you can start going into places like all our fashion boutiques that we have and look at the products that they have and put those together if you don't want to be at the store you can go into their their catalogs mm-hmm. right where they publish their catalogs or the looks so you, there's tons of places where you can just um, get your feet in yep. and get your experience and a lot of times this is something with Canada they require a lot of volunteer service <laughs> um, and volunteer service is really good to teach you a lot of stuff and we have a lot of people in the community who volunteer many many things um, including their time and their efforts uh, amongst other things so um, those things start somewhere you know mm-hmm. uh, whether if you're at an art in an art school right. say I want to be a TA you know you're gonna volunteer your time you want to be um, even a children's daycare just go and see how it's done and if you're into teaching kids and you know want to restart um, other designers there's advertising companies anywhere you go just go into the, the field that just gives you a little uh, exposure mm-hmm. you know and gets you in there and you they, you don't have to be like a complete designer where I have a line of these things you know I have my own line yep. you work together you work as a team you develop ideas mm-hmm. and then you take it from there so those are probably the best places to start with What else has worked for you, especially when you're trying to approach corporate clients? I think our marketing uh, has mostly been on social media. We've tried to create a look and we've tried to create a feel of what the space is going to be like with our pictures and the way we we take uh, or the sequence in which we put it in. So social media plays a huge role in your success these days, Uh, getting the word out there. Nobody is... um, you know, sitting with newspapers anymore, waiting for you to print an ad there. Um, and the second thing I think that gets you out there is to create community events. Um, you know, become sponsors. Yep. Sponsor events that you align with. If someone is approaching you with a good idea, sponsor their their events, take interest in their ideas, mm-hmm. and definitely get yourself out there. A lot of times we have... Um, people approaching for example even with with artists on wheels we had um we offered different workshops for for different companies uh, you know with who worked with people with disabilities or who per- worked with people with um, different kinds of challenges multiculturalism all of those things and you mm-hmm. you believe in all those things those are your values your principles and so the give back aspect uh should be in those things where you you provide um you know sponsorship or support to to them that way and obviously once you have those and they have their clientele you have your clientele you merge together do a lot of collaborative events Mm -hmm. sometimes uh, spaces can get pricey or 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 anything availability and so if we just join hands together in collaboration and do those things i think we'd be able to put out more for the community we'd be able to get more from the community as well so those are collaborative uh, efforts are very important so even if like a lot of companies, when they approach you, they'll have different tiers of uh, sponsorship or different ways you can be involved. So definitely take a look into that and expand your, your outreach as well, right? If someone wants to enroll their kids in your programs or um, utilize your services for designing, or maybe rent out your space. How can people get in touch with you? So our Instagram is at the Inked Loft, I-N-K-D-L-O-F-T. 
Um, it's the same on Facebook and our website, which usually has all our classes that are happening um, and under workshops, you can register online, pay online. Uh, that is at www.inkedloft.com. Again, mm-hmm. I-N-K-D. There's no E in there. Um, That's a cool name. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, and uh, our phone number, our, our hours, everything is online. Even if you want to rent this space, if you want to teach something here, if you want to do anything, you want to come view the place, you can either email us at info at inkloft.com or you can dm us through instagram or facebook and and you can still call us from that uh, number that's on uh, the website and i'll put all of these things in the description so you can get in touch well thank you so much for giving me your time for letting me come to your beautiful place here and uh, sharing your insights with other people as well thank you so much thank you so much for for coming and uh, taking interest in this and and putting us out there. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.